So in the last two videos, we were talking about equilibrium potentials. Remember, equilibrium potential is used to describe the voltage that develops if the membrane is permeable only to a single ion, like sodium or potassium or chloride. Now, even though equilibrium potentials are really important, equilibrium potential and membrane potential are not the same thing. And this is because our cells are never permeable to just one ion. At any given point, we have potassium permeability, we have sodium permeability, and we have chloride permeability all at the exact same time. And so this means that the Nernst equation can't be used to calculate membrane potential because it only takes into account one ion. So throughout this unit, and even in the last unit, I've been using this term steady state to describe a point where the net flux of an ion is zero. I want to point out that a steady state is not the same thing as an equilibrium. In other words, it's not a point where there's no movement of ions. Instead, it's a condition where all the ions that are moving have equal and opposite movements to each other. The net flux is zero. So similar to um, this concept that we've been, been talking about, we could take a look at the bucket that's on this slide. And you can see that it's draining and filling at the exact same time. If at any given point we took a picture of the bucket, it would look like it was relatively constant, right? Nothing was happening. But in fact, there is things happening. There's water coming into the bucket, there's water going out of the bucket. It's just that they're doing it at equal rates. So membrane potential is a steady state. It's the voltage that develops across the membrane from the movement of all permeable ions. But since those movements eventually become equal and opposite, the net flux is zero, the membrane potential reaches a steady state that we call resting membrane potential. So in this picture, you could imagine that if I wanted to increase the water level, I could turn on the faucet a little bit more, or I could plug up some of those holes at the bottom. And if I wanted to decrease the water level, I could turn down the faucet, or I could drill more holes in the bottom of the bucket. That would cause the water level to reach a new steady state. The same thing can happen with membrane potential. I can move from my resting membrane potential to a more positive membrane potential or a more negative membrane potential simply by changing ion permeability. Now, equilibrium potential and membrane potential are different but related concepts. And the relationship is that equilibrium potentials help to determine membrane potential. We can think of membrane potential as basically being a weighted average of equilibrium potentials. And the weight is the permeability of that ion, which again is different for each ion. So in this table, you can see that potassium has the relatively highest permeability at rest, and sodium has the lowest relative permeability at rest. So here's another way of thinking about this. Remember that I used this slide to explain the concept of equilibrium potential to you. Again, equilibrium potential is the voltage that a single ion would create if it were allowed to balance its concentration gradient and electrostatic forces. Another way to phrase this would be that equilibrium potential is the voltage that each ion wants the membrane to be at. So in many cases, it's just a hypothetical thing that you're trying to achieve. But membrane potential, on the other hand, is determined by the equilibrium potentials of all permeable ions. So it's the voltage that's created by this big electrochemical tug of war. Potassium wants the voltage to be at its equilibrium potential of minus 75 millivolts. And chloride wants membrane potential to be at its equilibrium potential of minus 59 millivolts. And sodium wants membrane potential to be at its equilibrium potential of positive 58 millivolts. And all of these ions are pulling at the exact same time. They're trying to pull membrane potential towards their equilibrium potential. So equilibrium potentials determine membrane potential. And that means that membrane potential can never be more positive than the most positive equilibrium potential. It can never be more negative than the most negative equilibrium potential. In other words, if you're actually in a tug of war, the furthest that you can pull on the rope is to the place that you yourself are standing in, right? You can't pull to a position that's behind you. And this is why it's a good idea to remember that potassium usually has the most negative equilibrium potential and that sodium usually has the most positive equilibrium potential because that means that sodium's equilibrium potential of positive 58 
is like the ceiling. It's setting the upper boundary of what membrane potential can be. And potassium's equilibrium potential of minus 75 is like the floor. It's setting the lower boundary for what membrane potential can be. Now, even when membrane potential changes, it always has to fall between the floor and between the ceiling, between potassium's equilibrium potential and sodium's equilibrium potential. So usually this is between minus 75 and positive 58. Now, in a tug of war, what determines the movement of the rope is how hard each person is pulling. Stronger people are typically able to pull the rope to be closer to them, and weaker people, unfortunately, typically find that the rope is further away from them. In the case of membrane potential, the strength of the pull is determined by the ion's permeability. So ions that are more permeable are able to move membrane potential closer to their equilibrium potential. And ions that have low permeability don't really have much of an influence because they're too weak. A typical neuron has a resting potential somewhere around minus 70 millivolts, and that's incredibly close to potassium's equilibrium potential of minus 75 millivolts. And that's because, like we said before, potassium has the highest relative permeability at rest. And that's because a family of channels known as leaky potassium channels is open at rest, creating that high potassium permeability.